Hello and welcome everybody to episode two of Confessions of an RPG Maker User. Today we'll be discussing, or this episode rather, because I made the previous one in the same day. In fact, I just finished recording the last one before recording this one, but whatever. Um, this episode I'll be discussing my experiences with RPG Maker MZ. Now, MZ is the newest RPG Maker out there. It's their sort of as the successor to MV, but um, that wasn't, but later on I'll discuss why I feel like that isn't really much of the case. Um, it is available for 79, like 80 bucks, the same price as MV. The nice thing about, I'm just going to say what the nice thing about RPG Maker MZ is that it's a lot more streamlined experience, like comparing MZ to MV is like comparing Pokemon Red, or no, Pokemon Yellow to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. It's just things feel a little more snappier, things feel a lot more quicker. I feel like there's a lot of improvements with the overall behind-the-scenes JavaScript sort of dealio. But another thing that I kind of had, a, that I liked is just the fact that um, they added a bunch of new stuff like that added the time progress system which is now which is basically in ATB battling system except that it doesn't break the game because it's not relying on a plug-in that sort of you know that sort of shoehorns it in and breaks the engine doing so so yeah um another thing I really liked is the the amount of enemy graphics available which i feel like are different types of enemies that are completely different from mv so there's no slimes no bats no hornets or spiders or scorpions but the problem is is that and this is a problem that i feel like is kind of a huge one with mz is that in order to get the full range of enemies that you need for an rpg i feel like you need to import all the enemy graphics from mv MV into MZ. So if you want slimes, you want ogres, you want like orcs and shit, then you got to have a copy of MV handy so you can make a new project, then export some of those files to your MZ project. And it's kind of a mess because now you got new shiny new enemy graphics that people are going to ooh and ah it. But then you'll have old graphics mixed in that people aren't going to say ooh and ah to because it's all same hat, old trick sort of stuff from MV, which, you know, is a little problematic because I want to make new experiences with MZ. But I feel like that is kind of handicapped by the fact that if I actually want slimes, I have to reuse old graphics, which I'm not a huge fan of. Also, another complaint whilst we're complaining about the RTP is the music. Now, RPG Maker music is pretty good. Good enough where if you use it in a commercial project, provided that that person is not familiar with RPG Maker in general and aren't able to recognize the music, I feel like the music sort of stands out on its own. In fact, in my commercial projects, I have relied on the default music because it's decent enough where it feel where it adds a layer of quality to the game but i feel like the music has enough emotional range where it can describe a bunch of different uh ideas different kind of enemy encounters different kinds of sort of scenes cuz that's the thing i'd like for my ideal rpg maker default soundtrack is to have a wide range the, the ability to describe a wide range of situations and emotions and be able to set as many different scenes as possible. But the problem with MZ's music is that it's all high energy um, computer techno, techno pop sort of music, which is all right if you're making like, you know, a bootleg persona game, but I mean if you're trying to describe sort of an intense situation, then the really happy sort of bouncy 
tech techno music isn't going to describe that situation. In fact, when I was remaking The Legend of Zune, I had a hard time finding a piece of music that would describe sort of the encounter between Jack Trammell and Zune, the creator of the Toe Project games, where he gets kidnapped by Jack Trammell. And I had a hard time finding a suitable piece of music that describes sort of the intensity of the encounter and just sort of the foreboding nature and just the general evilness. But because the way the soundtrack sounded, it felt kind of out of place and couldn't find a really appropriate piece of music. So, and I was so unhappy with this that midway through development, I ended up breaking into the old DLC folder in MV, looking for the RPG Maker XP remastered soundtrack and copied all the positive and negative music as well as the boss music into MZ so that way I could have music that actually could be a just good indicator of what sort of uh, event or some sort of encounter or, you know, the the emotionalness of a given scene. So there's that. Um, then there's a lot of, then there's the uh, 3D particle effects, which I don't really care about. I don't really care about animations because I find making animations in RPG Maker to be an absolute mess. The, so here's the thing. I am an autistic human being. I have, I'm a high-functioning autistic. I've had a history of learning disabilities enough to the point where my education had to be sort of centered around the limitations of the lear of said learning disabilities but so some things aren't as self-explanatory to me as other things which is why I had such an issue with the quest journal plugin from Vizu Stella because you know having your plugin be actually be usable is one thing but god forbid an autistic individual has a hard time you know accessibility is the word that I'm kind of looking for for what that plugin should have been more aimed as it should be more accessible but anyway that's a topic for the previous episode or future episodes or whatever the hell um so going back to m mz and i got mz 10 percent off with a free copy of mz with mv which is you know pretty cool then i got the for dlc i got the cover art characters because the thing is is that more characters the more the merrier and another thing is that it comes with extra music and I kind of had at the time I didn't realize what poor emotional range or descriptive range that the music had and thus the extra music is kind of instrumental in fact one of the songs used in that was used for the casino level in the Legend of Zune of course the Legend of Zune remake killed itself because my computer froze while it was saving, thus corrupting a good chunk of the files. However, the level design was able to be salvaged, but now a lot of the stuff has to be recovered. A lot of the player characters have to be rebuilt. Uh, Plug-in parameters and quests have to be remade, and therefore the, the project is on hold for the time being, whilst I either find the courage to actually work on the game again and not feel grossed out or straight up do a new project but you know I'm having really bad writer's block at the moment so I can't really get myself to make a new game and be able to stick to it um MZ I feel like is really good in that I feel like if you're into RPG makers I highly recommend it if you're looking for your first RPG Maker tool, then yeah, I recommend it even more. But if you're that kind of RPG Maker user, that's like, okay, but can it do a bunch of cool features? Can it like, then I don't know. It's just a lot of people complain about MZ and reading through, I find that the Steam reviews to be a little disheartening. A lot of people say that it does too little, but the thing is that I don't really care if it does too little because I bought it with my own money, and therefore it's my decision to say whether or not this is a good 
program or not. And the problem with a lot of people bitching about it on Steam is that a lot of these people are consumers who just want something fun to play or play with, but not game development people. Some of them are, but I feel like a lot of people's complaints about RPG makers that its price is too high. Here's the thing about the price being too high. A lot of game development tools cost a lot of money because the only people that could afford that are game studios that actually have an operating income and an operating expenses. Therefore, they have therefore they have the ability to purchase high-powered tools to give to staff to make games that make money. The only problem is a lot of people who use RPG Maker aren't making money. In fact, they're just hobbyists who like to make Undertale games on Game Jolt. And those people aren't seeing a return. But the idea is that you make games with RPG Maker and the price of it pays for itself. You, In fact, I spent 80 bucks on MV like five years ago. And I felt I got my money's worth because I made the Legend of Zune series, which is essentially the sec, which is essentially my next, my second hit series after the Brony Quest series had pretty much petered out. Um, I made uh, Numskull Monotagari, which is this sort of um, collectathon JRPG, which proves that platformers aren't the only ones that can funk can have collect-a-thons um then you have uh dungeon topia which is sort of this weird living skills light educational game that has a plot that f- that focuses on the negatives of capitalism um so a lot was done with mv and i've done a lot with mv and i felt like i got my monies out that way Therefore, I kind of see MZ and MV as sort of long-term purchases where you buy this thing and you're going to use it for the next few years, making as many or as few games as possible, but that's really up to you. Um, As far as assets go, as far as graphics go, a lot of people complain about the chibi art style, and here's the thing. These people really need to be quiet about it because I don't I don't know about you guys, but I'm okay with the chibi art style. Like, of course, I've been using RPG Maker since VX, but, you know, I'm kind of used to the chibi art style. I'm fine with the chibi art style. In fact, I get a lot of mileage out of the chibi art style more than I could with the lanky sort of two sprite, two character block high XP sprites that a lot of people use and praise and like to use instead, but frankly, I don't really like that. In fact, I feel like those kind of character graphics are very freakishly big in size and too impractical for my taste, so there you go. That's how I feel about the chibi art style. I feel like it's fine. It's serviceable. It's a lot like the... E2, the the London Brighton South Coast Railway E2s. Sure, it's shit as if you really care a lot about it, but it did its job enough where you can say that it made sort of a lasting impact. There you go. Um, then we go into the character generator, which I like because you can offset some of the pieces, which is great if you want people who, to not have their glasses hanging off the middle of their nose or if you want to, you know move their eyebrows up and down so that way they can, you know, look pleasantly surprised. But the but I feel like there were less assets than there were... I feel like there was less character generator parts in MV at launch than there was character parts at MV's launch. And, like, it's kind of hard because I had to make Sir Clive Sinclair... So I end up giving him a beard that is much too big compared to the prototype picture of Sir Clive Sinclair. If you want to know who Sir Clive Sinclair is and how he, what he looks like, just Google search Sir Clive Sinclair. Um, I gave him a beard that is way too bushy compared to his portrait. I gave him hair of like a 40-year-old child predator, which I didn't like. And then Jack Trammell, who kind of 
has hair on either side of his skull, but not really so much on top. He kind of just looks like Jewish uh, Alan Alda, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Um, So I had a lot of difficulties dealing with it. If you want to make like fantasy characters, that's fine. But if you want to recreate somebody like the fat controller and have him wear a top hat, you are going to have a bad time. And the problem is with new RPG Maker games or programs is that the community need has just the community is sort of slow to make assets for it because you know it's a new piece of equipment but it's also comparatively expensive so some people are going to stick making shit for mv some people are going to stick making stuff for xp 2003 you know even the weird people that use rpg maker 95 these people that are going to be sticking with you know Older versions of RPG Maker aren't going to stick and make assets, continue to make assets. But sooner or later, the inertia of people getting MZ will start to build up and new stuff will become available, provided that they don't put paywalls and everything, like the whole Vizu Stella thing. But again, that's perfectly fine. Just remember that not everybody in in the RPG maker world has a budget or has money to spend on expenses towards game development. Cause if they did, then, you know, I wouldn't be complaining about how the RPG people aren't taking into consideration that RPG make the RPG maker community is just a group of hobbyists. Take that as you may, but you know, whatever. Um, on the whole, I feel like MV, M, MZ, MZ is perfectly serviceable. Like, if you want to, just wait for a sale. It's, But I feel like it's worth it. And this is going to be the new program I'll be using for the next five years until Katakoa comes out with a new version. Anyway, this concludes episode two. And I'll see you later. Oh, yeah. Please like and subscribe as well. Thank you.